Hi friends, today we'll cover many useful tips to increase your speed and efficiency when working with the command line inside a Linux distro. If you're new to the Linux command line, you might want to start with my previous series on bash, where I cover different areas. But if you're already applying the CLI, then you can jump right into this video. I'll be using an Ubuntu distro in a Vagrant box on a Windows 11 host, which I've also covered in a previous video. First thing you want to cover is what type of shell you're using. I've already covered bash, Z shell and fish in different videos. I would suggest choose either fish or Z shell for an increased productivity. This is due to syntax highlighting, autocomplete, inline history, and many more features, which we'll cover in this video. Find your current shell by typing echo dollar shell. It's most probably bash. Installing other shells is very easy. Simply use the package manager of your distro. For more information on package managers, watch this video. Switching to another shell is as simple as typing the name of the shell, like Z shell, fish, or bash. But if you want to change your default shell, then you can use the change shell command. We use cd to change directory, but if you type cd without any path, then you'll be sent to, the, to your home directory. The same way we use cd with tilde. And with cd dash, you'll change directory to your previous path. Use aliases to assign frequently used commands or combination of commands with parameters to a much shorter alias. Here are a few examples. For more information on aliases, watch this video. By combining commands, you don't have to wait for a command to complete in order to enter the next one. Use semicolon to chain them together. In my previous video, I covered combining commands in depth. You can access the commands you entered by entering history. To show only the last few commands in your history, enter a number as a flag with history. To search through the history, you can either pipe it with grep or use Ctrl R and start typing. Use arrow keys up or down to cycle through your history. Instead of using the arrow keys to navigate per character, use Ctrl left or right to jump per word, or use Ctrl A to jump to the beginning of the line, and use Ctrl E to jump to the end of the line. You can clear the command you've entered by pressing Ctrl U to delete from cursor to beginning of the line. Press Ctrl K to delete from cursor till the end of the line. To delete per word, press Ctrl W. To clear your screen, you can enter clear or use Ctrl L. With two exclamation marks, which are called bang bang, you can show the previous command, which is handy in combination with sudo, if you need elevated permission to run the previous command. Pipe commands with head or tail in order to show 10 first or 10 last entries. Here we list the content of the current directory by sorting it based on modification date and time, then pipe it with head in order to show 10 first lines or 10 top lines. Using tail, we get the last 10 lines. This also works with the content of a file, for example, log files. If we use head to show 10 top lines of the syslog, then we get the 10 oldest entries in the log file, while with ls we got the 10 most recent entries when using head. This has to do with how the output or the content is sorted. So when using head or tail, keep in mind how you're sorting. Both head and tail have their flags, which can help you customize the output. In order to read the content of a file, you can use cat. 
but that will show the entire file at once. In order to get the output page by page, use the less command and press space for the next page. When piping with less, you can use the dash R flag to retain the syntax coloring. In order to make cat show syntax highlighting, you need to install a package called Python 3 dash pigments. Then create an alias for cat with the following parameters. In order to make less show syntax highlighting, you need to install source highlight and then configure two environment variables by adding them to your bash RC file and reload it. Just like bang bang to use previous commands, we can use bang dollar to use the argument of the previous commands. This can save you time when you want to apply different commands to the same argument. Here we create a long directory path recursively. The path is now the argument, which we can reuse by typing our new command with bang dollar. Now we create a file in this directory and the file name becomes the arg argument. Instead of typing the file name each time with different commands, we can use bang dollar. You can also use the shortcut alt period. If you need to run one or multiple commands, which require you to press Y to confirm each time, instead of using the dash Y flag for each command, you can also use yes command and pipe it with your commands or script. This way you only enter yes once and don't use the dash Y flag each for each command. This works the same for no. Using echo, we can add content to a file by redirecting. A single greater than sign overwrites the content of the file with whatever you use with echo. And two greater than signs add the content to the last line without overwriting. And if you want to clear the content of a file, just use the single greater than sign with the file name. Using the watch command, you can monitor the output of a command every two seconds. For example, if you need to monitor new entries in a log file, enter watch, tail, and then your log file name. This will show 10 most recent log entries in that file by refreshing every two seconds. Here I have a second terminal open to the same vagrant box. And if I close the secure shell session or reopen it, we can see the new log entries. If you want to record everything in your command line session, then you can use the script command. But you should know that this will record a lot of data, not just your typing. You start the rec recording by typing script followed with the file name, and then start typing. When you're done, you can enter exit and then open the file to see the saved data. When you have logged into a session through a secure shell, SFTP, or just a different shell, you can close the session by typing exit or by using the shortcut Control D. Hope this video helps you to increase your efficiency when using the Linux terminal. And I'll see you in the next video.